Good morning. I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz of the Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Shelton, Connecticut, where no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are more than welcome into our faith community. I'd like to thank you all for your continuing support, whether it's by your prayers, uh, by your talents, by your treasures. We appreciate all that you folks do to support our ministry here at Huntington UCC. Um, for those of you who would like to uh, donate, uh, we do have a, a, an option for mailing in uh, to our church building at, at 19 Church Street. We also have a donate button on our website at huntingtonucc.org and also you can uh, download a handy dandy little app on your phone called Give Plus. So any way to donate, to give, to support with treasures and talents and prayers, it is more than appreciated. This coming Thursday is my prayer day. If any of you have any joys or concerns you would like me to share, please let me know and contact me. I'd like to wish everyone a very blessed uh, July 4th weekend. I hope you're all being safe and I hope we all will be in a moment in prayer to really, really pray for our country during this rather tumultuous time that we would truly live up to the ideals of of justice for all. So let's just take a few moments to close our eyes and take some nice deep breaths as we send ourselves into worship. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out hate. Breathe in the peace of God and breathe out discord. Breathe in the hope of God and breathe out despair. Breathe deeply. Feel the presence of God in you, through you, and around you. O Holy One, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You are good to all. Your compassion is over all creation. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. We shall speak of the glory of your realm and tell of your power. We shall make known to all people your mighty deeds. O Holy One, we shall worship and adore you. Amen. Let us pray. O Holy One of Love, in this time of worship, may you open our ears to hear your voice. May you open our hearts to know your compassion. Inspire us to follow Jesus ever more closely as the way of hope and grace for us and for our world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us join in confessing our sins to God asking for God's grace and forgiveness. O Holy One of mercy, may you look upon us now with compassion as we come again, asking for your forgiveness. We have too often heeded the call of other voices that speak alluringly of power and prestige, wealth and superiority. We have too often sought our own glory rather than the glory of your realm. 
May you pour your mercy upon us, opening us up to the true blessing of being one with one another, one with all creation, and especially one with you. Amen. God so loved the world that Christ came into this world, not to condemn us, but to save us. So I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven. We are made whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from the second chapter of the Psalm of Song of Solomon, reading verses 8 through 13. Listen for the word of God. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past. The rain is gone, over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, and the time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. May God a blessing to the hearing and the reading of these holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I can probably count on one hand minus pretty much all of my fingers at the times I've actually preached on the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs as it is often known. If you actually took a moment to look at this book in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew scriptures, you find that it's not like the others. It seems to fit more in with Shakespeare's love sonnets, because that's what it exactly is. It is a poem about love, about love between two people. In fact, when the scriptures were being put together, as you know, the scriptures were put together by a committee, um, there was much debate whether or not this book would be included, first by the Jewish theologians and scholars as they put together the Hebrew scriptures, and then again when the Christian canon was put, put together. Because this didn't seem to quite fit fit in with the stories of faith, of history, of prophecy, of proverbs, of psalms, of gospels, of epistles. It seemed to be very, very different, and yet it remained. Part of the reason was that there was a tribute to the great King Solomon, but they're actually not sure where this scripture actually came from. It doesn't have a lot of history attached to it. They can't quite date it, but there it is in our scripture, a love poem. So what do we do with it? What do we do with a love poem about love between two people? The Jewish community saw it as being an analogy of God's relationship with Israel. And the Christians have taken it as been Jesus' relationship with the church. But again, if you read this very carefully, um, it's pretty much about human love and human passion. So what do we do with this book? The Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs, human love being celebrated. I've been wrestling with what to say about this and I've come up with sort of two ways 
to look at this. Number one, this is a reminder that the God that created all things is the God of our whole life. That God is not compartmentalized into just being God of a little piece of our life, maybe about our morality or our ethics or our Sunday morning worship. But the inclusion of the Song of Solomon is a reminder that God is a God of our whole life. Our relationships, the way we are in the world between spouses and partners and lovers. That God is a God that permeates our whole existence, that we cannot compartmentalize God. And it reminds us that when we make our decisions or as we go through our life, God is there helping us make decisions, helping us be more compassionate and more loving. God is a God of our whole life. So that's one way I've looked at this. And another way I've looked at this, especially this passage, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig puts forth its figs and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. This book, the Song of Solomon, also reminds us of hope. It reminds us no matter where we find ourselves, even in the most difficult circumstances, that there is hope. There will be that time of singing again. There will be time when the flowers will bloom. There will be a time when the figs spring forth. So it's also about hope and also a reminder that sometimes we just have to come away. To come away from our worries and our anxieties, to come away from our stress and just take a moment to breathe, take a moment to be to remind ourselves that God is God of our whole life, that God's love envelops us at every moment, and that God gives us sustenance and grace and guidance and courage to face the days. Our God is a God of love. Our God is a God of hope. And God calls us to live in that love and live in that hope. To sometimes come away and remember, to embrace God in our lives, to accept the Spirit into our hearts, to know that Christ is with us, that we live in Christ's love, in Christ's grace and in Christ's hope. So if you haven't read this book, take a moment. It's not too long. And read it. Read it with an eye of love. Read it with an eye of hope. And read it with an eye that truly God is in all and through all, in us and through us. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat>
We give thanks for Corey's successful uh, operation this uh, past week, and we offer our prayers to all the families that have lost loved ones, especially those uh, of COVID-19. We're up to over 130,000 deaths. So let us come to God in prayer. O God of hope, O God of love, O God of mercy, O God of strength, we thank you. We thank you that we can know you are always with us. We thank you that you reach out to us at every moment we thank you for the stories of scripture that surprise us, that bring us different perspectives. And we thank you for the blessings with which we have been blessed. We're so grateful for your son, Jesus, who truly showed us what it was to be human, to embody your love and grace in this world. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that works in us even now, drawing us closer to one another, drawing us closer to you. We thank you, gracious God, for the people in our lives, whether they're near or whether they are far. The people who love us and support us, the people who teach us and challenge us. We thank you, gracious God, for celebrations, for birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you for this 4th of July weekend when we remember how folks truly struggled and strived to bring forth the idea of this country, a country that where all people are considered equal, where there is justice, where there is representation, and we pray that you continue to bless us and move us into becoming that dream that was dreamed so many years ago. We thank you, gracious God, that we do come to you, that we can come in any way, in any place, and know that you hear our prayers. And so we offer up, gracious God, the concerns of our hearts. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who are in nursing homes and rehabilitation centers. We pray for those who are confined at home whether it be involuntarily or voluntarily. We pray for all those who have lost jobs. We pray for all those who are struggling financially. We pray for all those who are just plain struggling, being it body, in mind, or in spirit. And we pray for our country, we pray for our world that is still growing, that is still changing, that is still a work in progress. Help us all, gracious God, to not only lift our prayers, but to do what we can to work for justice and peace and equality in our land and beyond. Help us to recognize that we are all one people despite our physical differences, despite our theological differences, 
despite our political differences. We are all the same blood and bone. And help us to work for a land, for a world that does not see color, that does not see creed, but sees people, beloved children created by you. So help us, gracious God, help us to know that you are the God of all things, of our whole life and of all lives. And help us to work in this world for your realm of love and light. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are celebrating Holy Communion. Holy Communion, the taking of the elements as a reminder of Christ's presence in our life. Christ's presence in us and through us and around us. So gather your elements, whatever you have, knowing that God can transform all things into blessing. Let us pray. O holy God of extravagant generosity, you have created all that there is. You have filled it with your love and your goodness. And you created us in your image to set forth your light into this world. You have created us to be in community. You have created us to be in love. You have created us to live in peace and justice. And yet we seek other ways. our tendency for greed, our love of power, our feelings of insecurity that cause us to press our superiority, separates us one from another and separates us from you. And still down through the history, you continue to call out to us when we have strayed so far away. Showing us a way back, showing us the path of love. And still we often did not listen. So you emptied yourself and came to us in human form in the man that we know as Jesus. Jesus came to this world to show us what it was truly meant to be human. He showed forth love. He showed forth grace. He didn't see people's differences, but rather celebrated their sameness. And so we remember we remember the way he healed and taught. We remember the way he loved. But it didn't sit well with the government or the religious establishment. And so they plotted against him because they feared for their own wealth and their own power. So we remember. 
We remember that on the night of his betrayal and his desertion. Jesus took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we remember that after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. O holy God, we know that even death did not stop your love, that on that third day, Jesus rose to proclaim your realm of love and light, to proclaim your realm of eternal forgiveness and eternal life. And we are so grateful. And so we ask that you would bless these reminders of that love and that life. Bless this bread, bless this cup. May it be for us the presence of Christ in our lives, that we may be the presence of Christ now in the world. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Give us your strength. Give us your hope. Give us your love that we may truly live our lives as your people, striving for good, striving for justice, striving for peace for all. And we pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the bread of life. Take and eat. This is a cup of blessing. Take and drink. Let us pray. O Holy One of Blessing, we offer our thanks to you that you have claimed us all as beloved and have given us the presence of Christ again and again. We are especially grateful for this meal that you have set before us to remind us once again, we are yours now and forever. Amen.
So remember that God is the God of our whole life, of all of our loves, of all of our dealings, of all of our being. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. God bless.